Whisper of the Heart was originally shot at a villa in Shinshu owned by a relative of Hayao Miyazaki. It all started when Hayao Miyazaki was ragging around, reading a girl's magazine called Ribbon that a relative girl had forgotten. At that time, Memoru Oshi, Hideaki Anno, and many others came to the villa, and I heard that Hayao Miyazaki sparked an argument with everyone there. Can this be made into an anime? Or, more fundamentally, can a shoujo manga be made into an anime? I said, can this be made into an anime? That's a great thing to say. In other words, Hayao Miyazaki doesn't recognize at all the history of girls animation, which includes Candy Candy, Witch Girl Meg, and on and on. That was not a girls anime. It is not an animated shoujo manga, but simply made in the same Tezuka Osamu like grammar of animating a shonen manga. I mean, can the grammar of shoujo manga itself be brought into anime? I mean, can the grammar of shoujo manga itself be brought into anime? What I mean is that for Hayao Miyazaki, shoujo manga, as written in the project proposal, is a world of half-truths. There is such a pure feeling that you can't write without coming up with some lurid lie. That's the great thing about shoujo manga, he said. It depicts the kind of pure feelings that can only be written about with the use of a few silly lies. That part of the job would be worth doing. Hayao Miyazaki thought, can I do this? And so, he cut out the storyboards and made Whisper of the Heart. At that time, Hayao Miyazaki was his own producer. It's not that I am a junior who is close to you, as I do storyboarding and scriptwriting myself. In the animation industry, seniority and juniority don't mean much, but you decided to give more opportunities to the younger generation, which is why you made Kondo San the director. How do we establish the realistic and sordid lie that I mentioned earlier? I was trying to create that sordid lie by layering thoroughly realistic depictions of everyday life. And that's a fiercely realistic expression at the beginning. This is already overflowing with a sense of rivalry against only yesterday made by Aisao Takahata. Therefore, I would like to explain how the opening of Whisper of the Heart is made. This is the opening of Whisper of the Heart, which begins at a place called Country Road. The city appears at night. In this nightscape, only dots of light are flickering, and they are messily beautiful. The title will appear in it, and the narrow train here will run. It's the only train that's moving in a big way, so it's incredibly eye-catching. You make a story by applying your subjective view to this train, or rather, by making it cover your eyes. First, a night view of the Great Tokyo appears, seen from a very high altitude, with only the train moving. Next, a rather large terminal station appears, and this narrow train curves its way into this terminal station. Since the only moving object is almost exclusively this train, I would say that the viewer's eyes are absorbed by this train. I think to myself, this train stops and the story begins. Then the altitude gradually decreases. It's already really from looking at the altitude from about a thousand or so meters to hundreds of meters. The altitude descends to where you can see each building, then the altitude descends to about 100 meters. It's hard to tell here, but this train is coming into the station and coming to this position. And then the train stops with a squeak. When I first saw it, I thought, oh, is this where the story finally begins? I was like, oh, is this where the story finally begins? But the story doesn't end here at all. And this train departs once more. You can see a building district far beyond this curve where the cars pass, and you can faintly see a train there, and then the train starts moving again. In other words, you show the terminal station, the big Tokyo, and then you see a little rural terminal station in the middle of it. The train stopped there, but furthermore, that train leaves, and the train goes to a place where there is no this building district, a much lonelier and darker place. 
Then, the balcony of an antique store called Chikudo, which also appears in the film, is shown next. As I watch the old man breathing on that balcony, I see the train I just saw speeding past the railing of that balcony. I am just following this train as I place my camera in the countryside more and more and lose altitude. Finally, the train stops. Three pictures go from the top. Finally, the camera came to the ground. There is a railroad crossing and a woman is waiting for the crossing to open. The train slowly stops and stops at the station. Stopping at a station, the door with the conductor opens first, then the passenger doors. It's a very careful drawing, but this woman is bending her neck just a little bit as the train passes by. He looks at them. The acting in this area is very detailed. The camera comes down to the ground, pretty much. The train finally stops, and next, people come down from the station, and the train just stops. So all the way from the Great Tokyo, which is seen from an altitude of about several thousand meters, in the Great Sailing Room, following the movement of the train, to think that that train went all the way to the countryside and finally stopped at a small station with a railroad crossing. People started to flood in from there. A family mart can be seen over here. The actual convenience store is clearly visible and people flood towards it. Then, inside this family mart, the main character, Shizuku, is expressionless, buys a single carton of milk, and walks out the automatic door of this family mart. Finally, here comes the main character. Not the dramatic way the main character appears in Hayao Miyazaki's animations, but a great restraint, far up in the sky, all the way down. While everyone else was going into the family mart in front of the station next to this ground level crossing. One person, the protagonist from this family mart, is a character. This animation, for me, is still this Miyazaki animation, as Toshio Suzuki and Aisao Takahata have said in this book of Whisper of the Heart. It was an experiment to see if Miyazaki could make an animated film without Hayao Miyazaki. It was a grand experiment. It was a success. In the Ghibli textbook, Toshio Suzuki said, the thing is that Miyazaki animation can be done without Miyazaki. I still don't know if success is a good thing or a bad thing, he says. Hayao Miyazaki himself has left several traces of this animation. For example, this is something I don't do very often in my animation. Suzuki is really the last one already. It's the scene where he shows his first novel he wrote to old man Chikudo and is embarrassed. I said, this is great, I'm so embarrassed and ashamed. And then she gets really embarrassed. After showing that embarrassing thing, my body got cold, so there is a scene where the two of us eat nebiyaki udon noodles together. Well, to be frank, this scene is very erotic. This means that, for the first time in his life, he is showing something more embarrassing than being seen naked to his old man, who is like Hayao Miyazaki's alter ego. Afterwards, like after a man and a woman have sex, only the scene where they are cooking udon noodles in a pot in front of a fire smells a bit messed up and erotic in this anime. Oh, I thought, what the heck, I've got Hayao Miyazaki out here. You have a very natural way of presenting this kind of eroticism. This Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind, in which Nausicaa is captured by the Pajide people. Asper. When you shout Asper, Hideaki Anno points out the scene where the breasts are bouncing around. Hideaki Anno said in the audio commentary that the shaking of the breasts is quite wonderful. Hayao Miyazaki was the first person in the world of animation to shake his chest, wasn't he? So you are saying, I think. I'll explain that in detail in this scene. When I turned my body over to yell out this asper with worry, my boobs came up to my chin. 
By lowering it one more time below the face, the boobs would come above the position of the face and then lower one more time. I do the part where the breasts are wobbling, but probably no one would find this erotic if they watched it on TV on a regular Friday roadshow. I think it is a very natural scene where Nausicaa is worried, but she was very happy to do this kind of thing, and there was a great deal of eroticism and eroticism on site. Something like this is what Hayao Miyazaki would do. Other than that, Katayama-san pointed out, Nausicaa jumps out of the Pajit ship in a meet. After this, there is a scene where they fly away like this. Katayama-san is testifying, while painting this scene. Hayao Miyazaki said, It's so shameful that you're flying around here with your big toes spread wide. He said, I heard that you were laughing and drawing. Hideaki Anno would say, Well, he's my father. And I'd say, What a petty daughter. I'm just a father. And he says, What a petty little girl. I'm just a father. And he draws the picture. I'm sure you can check the audio commentary to see what I mean. These scenes are also tense scenes, and the people watching are tense, and that's not the point. If anything, I would feel bad about myself if this scene looked naughty. The same is true of this scene. If this scene looks naughty, I would feel bad about myself. The same is true of this scene. If this scene looks naughty, I would feel bad about myself. <laughs> it is interesting to note that Hayao Miyazaki's fingerprints in this area are still rather present in Whisper of the Heart.